that is in our local press today and from the weekend my name is Nicole Matziwa and joining me here is I'm Adriana Makara. Good to see you Adriana, it's been a while. It's been a while. You know I don't remember the last time I actually did this together, yeah, together but yeah. it's exciting nevertheless. So quickly we'll just get into the standard. Um, that is, of course, from the May, uh, from May 5 to May 11. So the standard, the headline reads, Mnanga got betrayed Changira. Of course, this is according to Chamisa. And we've experienced that during the weekend, that is on Saturday, um, Chamisa, there was the Changira Memorial. Yeah. So this is where uh, Chamisa was uh, addressing the gathering that was there. So the, according to the standard, it says, MDC leader Nelson Chamisa yesterday accused President Emerson Nangak of betraying the late Morgan Chandrai by allegedly backtracking on concessions he made to secure the opposition leader's backing in the ouster of the former President Robert Mugabe. Chamisa told hundreds of, of people that attended Chandrai's memorial service at Hamunikwa village in Pumera that Nangakwa Nangagwa had promised the former prime minister certain democratic reforms, but the ZANU PF leader was now backtracking. Changirai told me, of course, this is according. This is a direct quotation according to Chamisa. He said, Changirai told me that Chamisa, we are now going to help remove the poverty uh, caused by M Mugabe. But the assurance I have is that we are going to have a transitional authority. Chamisa said. I said to him, this was a good thing, but he, uh, I, but I asked him if he was sure about the people he was dealing with, and he said, let us give them a chance. Of course, that's what um, that's the narration according to Nelson Chamisa. But he did approach, uh, he did speak to the late Amuk and Changilai yeah. about Munangagwa, and certainly according to Chamisa's narrative, Munangagwa betrayed his promise that he had made that they were gonna have a transitional government. Yeah. Uh, Maybe they'll have, they have the dialogue but well, according to the news day today, it says Nangagwa pursues dialogue with our Chamisa. So oh, he's it's, it's he's, 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 he's going forward, he's moving forward, you know. Uh, backward, what do they say? That is back, backward never, forward forever, something like that. Yeah. So what do you have from the daily news? All right, so the daily news today says, uh, Trump sets tough conditions for ED as the United States demands arrest of the 1st of August and January killer soldiers. President Donald Trump's uh, administration has demanded that President Emerson Nangago punishes security forces who stand accused for killing civilians during the last year's post-election demonstrations as well as the this year's riots. Uh, the demand is part of the onerous conditions by Washington that uh, would be I would see the United States of America removing the punitive sanctions against Zimbabwe if they are met. So that's a tough one. So, so did they identify the killer soldiers anyway? Are they in custody? Where are oh, they? I'm equally confused. This is what the, the situation in Zimbabwe is, becomes very difficult. Like yeah. you don't know exactly what is going yeah, on. Yeah, we never heard of the names of the killer soldiers. We don't know if they are arrested yet. We don't even know who sent them. But I think if paper. they were operating under instruction, so if they were told to do so, you can just okay. shoot on a civilian without any instruction. That is true. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, should we cross back to the news day? Uh, okay, let me just get it uh, done and over with. Uh, so the parliament urges minister to act on the Zinara Road. Uh, Parliament's Public Accounts Committee, PAC, yesterday urged Transport Minister Joel B. Gimatiza and the Permanent Secretary Amos Marawa to act on the road uh, at the Zimbabwe National Road. That's Zinara, which was exposed by the Auditor General's 2017 audit report. Report. Auditor General A.G. Mildred Chiri, in her audit report, an uh, corrupt dealings and prejudice, which account, according to the Grand Trump Fund's uh, Oceanic Audit Report, saw the process of losing over 70 million of taxpayers' money. Wow. Okay, yeah. so there's definitely a road, like a big road that is going yeah, on. I also have this nursery. I do, I do have to say the road like the big has to say we're covering all oh, the Zinara stories. Okay, so please viewers would like to take a short break, but when we return we'll resume our um, news.
TV and you're watching Morning News. So before we went to the short break, we were talking about um, Zinara. Zinara. Yes, exposing the corruption, of course. So maybe before I get to the Zinara story, let me just tell you what's on the headline yeah, on the first ahead. page of the news day. So it says, Better Lines Drawn in the MDC. And as you are aware, um, we are approaching, our uh, days are, are getting closer to the MDC uh, Congress, yes. So they will be, however, uh, voting and choosing which um, leaders are going to make, you know, the core of the MDC. So this is what this is about. So the battle for political survival in the opposition MDC went a top notch on Sunday when, Pali when party heavyweights nominated for positions in the Executive Council unveiled their manifestos before the Harare provincial delegates for this for the elective congress scheduled for later this month. Party leader Nelson Chamisa, who was nominated unopposed, set and watched candidates, charm voting delegates as campaign season officially opened. So Tendai BT Mogen Komichi, Elias Mutsuri, and Walshman Inoue faced each other for the two slots of the deputy, uh, uh, deputy president, deputy, to deputize Chamisa. Sorry, while the other slot has been reserved for a female candidate. So, um, so I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what uh, these uh, th uh, nominees, what they presented as their, no uh, as their ideas uh, to be voted for on the Congress. So we'll start with BT. So according to BT, he says that uh, the 2019 Congress of the MDC the fifth Congress is going to be very important for the party. It is an opportunity for starting new dialogue with the people of Zimbabwe. It is an opportunity for the people of the MDC to show to the people of Zimbabwe that we are tired of being in opposition. He added that the party must focus on rural areas in order to gain state power. So that was that was his part of his presentation. And we move on to uh, Morgan Komichi. He says, I have stayed in the party and I've gained two names, General Mayo and Abrahama. Uh, what, what does General Mayo mean? So he spoke. Uh, it means the greatest strategist. Abrahama means a good leader. A good leader is a good follower, he said. Uh, under fire Mutsuri, uh, who was uh, one time was I in the presidency, but only got nominated for the post of vice presidency by one province. He went on to say, I believe I am a massive pillar of the party, which has never been shaken. The corner of the house does not get removed for no reason, he said. So Nube, um, on the other hand, says, I will do all I can all, and all in my power to render all assistance to President Chamisa, one of the tasks of the president which has not been spoken to a lot. It is the task of providing strategic direction. I, in short, the task of thinking, Mr. President, I will think with you, if necessary, to think until it hurts, he said. So those were quite compelling remarks that were made by this candidate as they were trying to sell the idea that they are the best candidates for that position. So we can only wait. And I wish I could do a drum roll for the dramatic effect, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah we can't really wait. So, of course, that's according to the, um, uh, the news day. So, coming back now to this another story. So, yesterday, um, Honorable Matiza sat with the, uh, with the parliament uh, and he was quizzed over uh, the $5.7 million that was deposited in a bank that closed soon after the deposit was made. Oh. Ooh, I know, it's scary and it's fishy, too fishy yeah. actually. So Transport Minister Joel Bigimatiza yesterday was quizzed over the 5.7 million which was deposited by the Zimbabwe National Road Administration Zanara into a distressed Zimbabwe allied bank group uh, two weeks before it closed. Energy Minister Joram Gumbo was the Transport Minister then. Matiza was appearing before the Tindai uh, BT led Public Accounts Committee to speak on the issues to do with Zanara. Uh, so this was quite a conundrum because he was in a corner. You yeah, know? Yes. How, how would you deposit money in a bank that, that you is about to close? Exactly. It's literally sinking because I believe that, uh, you know, when you check, when you even look at their financials, when before you deposit such money, you need to... No, I think it's just a cover-up of their corruption because you cannot just deposit money and then it sinks just because the bank is closing. 
I think so they knew the bank was closing, so they had their deals with the bank. What's the name of the bank anyway? It's called uh, Zimbab Allied uh, Banking Group, ZABG. I don't know that one. Yes. So, so uh, this would be companies, but something is fishy there and they should be investigated. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. I think uh, Honorable Matiza needs to rectify this and then, you know, so that it's it's, it doesn't look very, very good. Where is the money? How do you account for it? Exactly. Is it back? And just because you... Right, can they sue the bank? Well, it's closed. We didn't have any... We had any... Uh, what headline? That is... Uh, let's say... Uh, Sinara is suing the ZAPG for such an amount. It did not. Well, I guess time will only tell if he then just does the, the good and noble thing of actually retaining the 5.7 million US dollars. I mean, this is US dollars. Imagine yes. how much bond other TGS knows that is. That's a lot of money. You know, that's a lot of money. Okay, so what do you have from baby years? Okay, so nice out for BT and move it up. MDC Vice President Elias Mutsuri says party structures should reject both Tendai BT and Welshman Mube as they once left the party to form their own political parties as the fighting for the three vice presidents pours up uh, for grabs. Uh, gets dirty. Muzuri, BT, Mube, and Morgan Komichi are locked in a bitter contest to win the hearts of MDC supporters out of the party's elective congress that will be held on the 24th and 26th of this month. So the three vice presidents are uh, the MDC has three vice presidents, but one seat is reserved for a woman leaving Mube, Komichi, and BT, or oh, and Muzuri also to fight for the two available seats. So it is nasty. It is, it is. I think at their own we've heard yeah, their yeah, compelling yeah, arguments yeah. Yes, where they deserve. So if you're watching us, please tell us who you think deserves or who you think is actually going to take it. Okay, the two. The two, yes, yeah, because yeah. Of already one is, is you know, exactly. is uh, is reserved for, 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 a lady. for a lady, yes. So uh, also, uh, how did we chicken out uh, from MDC VP race? So respected MDC veteran politi uh, politician Corina Mparirwa has chicken out of the race as Nelson Chamis' deputy opting to contest for the, po uh, for the position of Women's Assembly Chairperson. MDC spokesperson Jacob Mafume confirmed the development to the Daily News yesterday, saying Mparirwa was nominated both for Vice President Post and Women's Assembly Chairperson. But still she's chickening out for the VP. So who is the woman who's going to take the reserved seat? I think and who is she contesting against? Well, there's actually a couple of ladies that she's contesting with from the MDC. Mm -hmm. But my argument here is I think the lady, is, I think for the gentleman it's quite a tight race. Mm -hmm. But now the fact that she's pulling out, it, it just gives yeah. a breather. Yeah, to others. Other, yeah. Yes, other contestants there. So um, back to the news day. It says Portra's boss grilled over tariffs. Tariff, tariffs. Hike. Okay, so yesterday we realized, uh, we, we, yesterday we found out that the Portra's uh, Director General was called by the ICT Portfolio Committee in Parliament so that they, you know, they just discuss uh, uh, quite a, a number of things. This is the issue of tariffs has yeah. been going on and yeah. on. And um, the Portra's Director General, uh, Dr. Gift Machingete, did respond to how, um, uh, why and uh, the tariffs were priced at the current pricing that they are. So for more of these videos, you can visit www.technomag.co.zw for the compelling evidence that he, you know, that he presented and said, no, this is why the tariffs are being priced this way. However, I'll just give you a rundown of what he said. So this is what he said. He said that the current, the dollar, um, the dollar WhatsApp bundles that we had, the $254 month for Ethernet uh, subscribers, all those uh, bundles were, those data bundles were promotions so when they removed the promotions they started you know pricing the data pay you know out of a data bundle which is why it's now that but much. yeah that much so those are promotions however the ict portfolio committee argued that uh you know it, it, it was not fair for the consumers who are already strained economically yeah. you know schools are opening and you know there are a lot of things uh, but still, it wouldn't be fair to the telecoms that is providing that service. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So I think it's a... Precisely. I agree. So that's what he said. That's why our pricing of the tariffs 
are at the price that they are. But like I'm saying, the committee said that the promotions ran for so long that they made people believe that these were actual the pricing of the bundles. Mm -hmm. And they were supposed to tell people, like, you know what, these yeah, are the promotions. The promotion is going to end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It should have an end date. You, you just can't cut a promotion from yeah, nowhere. From and then nowhere. you wake up and there's no promotion. So that's what yeah. um, the portfolio committee was saying. And, um, but it's unfortunate that we are going to be paying for those, you know, very expensive bundles. We should go back to Jerusalem. Yeah, I think we're just going to beep each other, you know, exactly. and send so text. Back, like yeah. I think I would like to believe so. <laughs> okay, so back to the daily news. Uh, Chaos Brooks and PF Blauwaya internal elections. Uh, riot police were called. Uh, in to restore order during the ZANPF chaotic internal elections on Sunday after drunk and angry supporters accused the party chiefs uh, of holding sham elections ahead of the next week's crucial provincial polls. Lawaii province holds elections to choose a new executive next Sunday. Amid described by uh, disgruntled members who have raised a red flag over the manner in which um, district elections have so far been conducted. So the Matebelele is any uh, regarding this election. So the uh, sorry, on Sunday schools of of Zanu PF supporters caused mayhem at the party's Davis School provincial offices after some of the um, contestants page ten it's so funny. All right. Uh, protested uh, the outcome of the Blair City Centre District elections. Red police were summoned to defuse to defuse the rakas which Zanupiev restructuring uh, exercise coordinator Georgianary downplayed as a common in occurrence in electrical processes. So that's it for the daily news for today, I think. Okay, so moving on to the news date says parents struggle with school fees as economy bites. Parents yesterday said they were struggling to send their children back to school for the second term as they were failing to cope with the risk with the rising fees and costs of living against stagnant salaries. Schools open for the second schools open for the second term today and parents who spoke to the Southern Eye said that they had to cut back on their essential services so that they could send their children back to school. It's such a sad, you know, situation. Exactly. What the Zimbabweans are going when through. the fees is going out and the pay is going out, how do you survive how do you function? Of course, of course that's true. You know, at the end of the day you just end up sidelining the basic commodities or the basic things that you can get for your family so that you are able to send your I kids to school. I think it's wise to homeschool your kids at the moment because it's so much. I don't think but is it allowed to homeschool your child? Well, I, I don't think I don't think exams and all. Who will know? Who will know? It's not like yeah. there's a record of any baby out there that says, did they go to school? So I think you yeah. can, but it's a bad idea anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the last story from the news day today. It says, Wange widens after tax loss by 80%. Struggling coal miner Wange widens, widened its tax it's after tax loss by 80% to $78.4 million in the year ended December 31, 2018, down from $43.8 million in the previous year as the company failed to meet market demand and contain, and contain rising input, input costs. The company was placed under reconstruction last year. So that's what it's saying. It's ridiculous. From 48.3 million to 78.4 yeah. million, it's a lot of money. That's lot so of that's money. what the article is saying from the news day. And of course, that is the last from what we have we from our news today. Yes. Um, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Maybe if you can show our if you can show our viewers what we have from the Herald today. Just a little bit more. Okay. Right. Okay, so the Herald for today says that now I'm just being I'm just delaying and this is looks very really bad. Anyway, my apologies for that ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so the Herald 
uh, today speaks on yesterday we experienced um, uh, on uh, our president Emerson Nangago visiting uh, the Mbari with the Mbari flats we oh, yeah. yes. So it says president fulfills Mbari promise. That's what it says. So President Nangagwa yesterday told Matapi Floods in Mbari Harare to inspect renovations being undertaken by the government and its administra and his administration. Uh, sorry, I'll take that again. President Emerson Nangagwa yesterday told Matapi Floods in Mbari Harare to inspect renovations being undertaken by the government and his administration to fulfill its, pro its promise to re refurbish the dilapidated hostels. That's a very tough one. Dilapidated hostels. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, the head of the state and government visited the area last year, a few days before the July 30 elections, after an inferno that left 65 families homeless. So this was the, um, the visit after the renovations were made. So, so almost yeah. a year. Exactly. Yes, he his promise. Well, yes, he, one out of he, <laughs> he definitely fulfilled. So another story that we have from the Herald is council workers demand salary hike. I think we'll, it all comes back to what we were saying earlier, that uh, people really, uh, things are tough out there and people really, the salaries remain stagnant as inflation continues to grow. So Harare City Council office uh, workers are demanding a 5% salary increment to cushion them from price increases. So it seems like price increases are a menace. Yeah, it is a menace. But however, I think the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission should look into the city council. Garbage is not being collected. Our roads in the cities are very bad. A lot of things, there's no water. A lot of things is happening and the council is doing nothing. If you ask a, a government official, he said it's not our duty to construct the roads from your uh, areas like Zemarasekwa, wherever, wherever. It is the council's responsibility, but still the council is doing nothing at all. Do you hear that council? That is from a concerned resident who is saying there, they are, you know, um, they're reluctant. They you are know, they take, I think, three weeks mm -hmm. for them to just collect garbage. Exactly. Garbage collection. That's an issue, of course, that is concerning. And also, their water, the water is not the water situation. We also understand that the, the water is to, to, to water. Yeah. It's right? Oh. But the water levels, unfortunately, they, are, they keep on going down and down every single day, which is very sad and unfortunate for the residents in Harare and the areas that surround Harare that, of course, get the water from Lake Chiwero and other yeah. water sources that come from the city council. So that was what we had today on Take My TV on Morning News, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I would like to... You know, check if there are any comments. Are there any comments? Do you have any comments? No? Yes? I don't think there are any comments. So which is a bummer. I think this whole data bundle thing is a menace. It's just bad. People don't want to watch our lives anymore. But anyway, exactly. But thank you for watching anyway. All those that are going to catch up with our show later on, leave the comments. We will address them tomorrow in the morning after we see them. From me, Nicole Mazua, and the crew behind the scenes. So goodbye and watch us again tomorrow. And I forgot to please do not forget to subscribe on our YouTube so that you get a notification when we're live again tomorrow. And follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Like us so that you know whenever we're live, you know you just sort of like get a notification that Techno TV is live and then you're supposed to watch it. Anyway, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.